Nabob salutes the Reverend Al Sharpton for the Mickey Leland Public Service Award. Our culture, our political and economic empowerment would not have been possible. Black mayors and ultimately a black president happened because of the mobilizing of black radio. In any review of history, a revolution is not successful unless they take over the radio station. You won't even know it's a new government unless they take over the radio station and announce to the citizens a new government is in. There are those that would like to silence black radio now. There are those that would like to snuff us out with advertising dollars being withdrawn or by our imitating those that imitated us. Every generation of black broadcasters stepped up and interpreted their generation. It is now the lot of you that sit here tonight to give the drum beat and the sound to this generation. We are at the best of times and the worst of times. Best of times, we have a black president, a black attorney general, 40 blacks in Congress. Best of times. We've got black CEOs at major corporations. Worst of times, because we're still doubly unemployed. And grandma still has to decide whether she can afford her medicine or her rent. If you refuse to step up to these times and protect what we have gained, then you are the ungrateful recipients of a legacy that was laid before you that you did not pay a price for. I watched people like James Brown who started with three radio stations, and Percy Sutton and others build black radio. They didn't build it for people to sit here afraid to stand up for something as basic as health care this weekend. They didn't build it for us to jump on black presidents and have contests at this stage in history on who's the blackest, rather than who's going to help the people, no matter who they are, sit in the White House and have the right wing doing tea parties and black folks doing pee parties, trying to urinate all over the agenda that we need the caucus and others to set forth. That's not the role of black radio. You must give a voice to this generation, and you must show that we didn't come this far in some accident. I look and see why we had the pride we had is because those that talk to us every day made us dream beyond our circumstances. I thought as I watched Percy Sutton's funeral, Pepe had me do the eulogy, and I thought about how when I came off the stage, the pulpit at Riverside that day, Sherry, someone said to me, Reverend, I hope you do my eulogy. I said, well, you got to give me something to work with. Because the hardest job of a black preacher is to preach the funeral of an irrelevant Negro. You may have a lot of money, you may have a lot of possessions, but if you don't use it for more than you, it won't matter to nobody but you. And they will. There will be nothing to say about you, but you just one more rich Negro that wasted our time. I hope you understand the value that you have and the power you have. I remember Pepe and Alfred and I struggled around these definitions and trying to exalt our self-image. A few years ago, I remember Nash Action Network and NACP, some of us were trying to bury the N-word. Danny Bakewell and others were with us. And I remember one night we had a debate about it. 
talked about it on one of the cable shows, and one of the rappers got into a debate with me that he had the right to call himself the N-word. And I told him, well, they don't give you the right to call yourself nothing but the N-word. You say anything against others, they won't put it out. But if you say you're uh, the N-word, they'll put it out. And he got mad and had what I call a nigga fit all night. <laughs> nigga, 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 nigga. But about eight weeks later, I got a call from our headquarters, and they said he wanted to talk to me. I'd read in the papers he'd been arrested. They found him with something. I told, I told him, connect them in. They connect them in. I said, how you doing? He said, I ain't doing too good. I said, what's wrong? I got busted. I said, yeah, I read about it. I said, well, what you need me to do? He said, I need your help. I said, well, you need my help to do what? He said, they violated my civil rights. I said, niggas ain't got no civil rights. How you define yourself is how you be confined. You hold the definition of black America, and you need to be careful how you hold it, and we must protect it. We must stop people from advertising in our communities around us. We must stop us ourselves from lowering our expectations. We should have every member of Congress scared to vote against health care this weekend. We should have everybody understanding that we can deal in our family with our differences, but we're not going on the front lawn and fight this president and fight this attorney general. We came too far from the back of the bus to turn into some niggas on the radio now. Let's stand up in Mickey Nealon's name and let's make the rest of this journey the way it's supposed to be. Thank you, God bless Thank you.